Ah, The Legend of Zelda. What an amazing game franchise. It's blown me away ever since I was a little kid and it still manages to capture my imagination to this very day. I've seen this image around the internet and thought it would be great to cover, especially since there aren't 5 layers in this iceberg but rather 8 layers, and the theories in this iceberg are from various Zelda games, not just one. There's so much magic surrounding this series, and so much more mystery and speculations. So let's get into it. Bottom of the Well This is a not-so-optional optional area in Ocarina of Time that can be found in Kakariko Village. It can be accessed by Young Link if the Song of Storms is played to Guru Guru, and then the windmill goes crazy and, well, it gets drained. You can find the Lens of Truth and three gold sculptures that can aid the player on their journey to defeating Ganon. You know what else you can find down there? And stop following me! <laughs> Kepora Gepora is Rauru. The Sage of Light, Rauru, uses his owl form, Kepora Gepora, to guide the Hero of Time out of Kokiri Village and towards his destiny. This guy's a G, honestly, like, he even protected Link for the 7 years that he was maturing after pulling out the Master Sword. I am error. In the NES Zelda game, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, this is spoken by a villager in the town of Rudo. I am error is translated from, uh, excuse my Japanese, but uh, Ore no na wa era da. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> Which translates to, my name is Era. What a strange, uh, inclusion? Wait, hold on, I can't keep using Mario. I have to find something else, Zelda related. Yeah, <laughs> that's better. Either way, it seems like something that was included by the developers for fun. Like a funny meme. Hero Shade is the hero of time. So there's this lovely man over here. Say hi, wave, say hi. And guess who it is? It's the Hero of Time! Anyway, he appears as the Hero Shade in Twilight Princess to aid the Hero of Twilight, aka Link. So he's aiding a reincarnation of himself, someone of the Hero's bloodline. He teaches Link various sword techniques to aid him in defeating Ganon and his minions. It would seem that the Hero of Time has matured too. Obviously, since the last time we ever see him is as a child in Majora's Mask, which is by far my favorite Zelda game hands down. Hey! No! Get away! DON'T RUIN EVERYTHING! <clears throat> uh, yeah, so, <laughs> he's a shade because he lamented never being remembered as a hero and never being able to pass down his skills. I really feel for the hero of time because his triumph over Ganon is never seen in the timeline he returns to. And his victory in Termina was nullified because Majora's Mask was the one that created Termina. So when it was defeated, Termina ceased to exist soon after. It's sad. He's the hero that the world forgot. Despair seems like a mature thing to think about. He also spouts some wisdom to Link. He even cares for him, calling him my child. And just like a good father, he scolds his child when they slip up. I wish Nintendo would flesh out their Links and Zeldas more like this, where they're referenced after their games. Dead Town Guard. Also referred to as a soldier in the back alley, he is found in Ocarina of Time, dying in a back alley just before Link enters the Temple of Time with the three spiritual stones. He can be easy to miss since he's sort of hidden away. He tells Link of Ganondorf's betrayal of the royal family and that Princess Zelda escaped. He recognizes Link as a forest boy that Zelda had described in her dreams. And with that, he takes his final breath, struggles, and then dies. Attempting to talk to him again prompts Navi to say he's not moving anymore. That seems pretty dark for a kid's game. Silent Realms. These are test areas set up by their goddesses for Link to overcome in Skyward Sword. Completing these tests prove to the goddesses that Link has grown spiritually. The Silent Realm areas are kind of like stealth sections where Link has to collect 15 sacred tears and plop them into the spirit vessel. Guardians that scout and try to attack Link are scattered throughout each realm, but they'll only attack Link if he doesn't collect a tear within 90 seconds, if he comes in range of a Watcher, which are helpful eyes for the Guardians, or if he steps into Waking Water, which is loud water. After completing a realm, Link is awarded with a sacred treasure that'll help him on his journey. Lord of the Mountain In Breath of the Wild, there's a green glow that can sometimes be seen on the top of Satori Mountain. This signifies that the Lord of the Mountain is up there. Climb to the top of the mountain and be very careful not to scare it off. Hop on it, calm it down, and there you go! You've tamed the Lord of the Mountain. It has infinite stamina and is the fastest mount in the game. The only problem with it is that you can't have it registered as a mount, so it'll disappear a little bit after dismounting it. The Lord seems to also be referencing Satoru Iwata, 
the Nintendo president that sadly passed away in 2015, as the mountain the Lord is found on is Satori Mountain, and the Lord is also known as Satori. Botrick, the character you can talk to in order to learn about the Lord of the Mountain, also looks similar to Iwata, which is, you know, that's pretty sweet by Nintendo. And that about wraps up this layer. Now let's hit the iceberg. We're already getting into the spooks, but I guess it is a very surface level creepypasta ARG anyway. It was created by Alexander D. Jadusable Hall, and holy crap, I have not heard that name in what seems like forever. This is a three part story. Part one follows a college student named Jadusable, who acquired a copy of Majora's Mask from an old man at a garage sale in 2010. Little did he know, the game was haunted by a deceased child called Ben. Over the course of a week, he is haunted by Ben in real life and in Majora's Mask. Ben reveals that he had drowned. Jadusable posted all of his experiences on 4chan, Ben escapes Majora's Mask, and then Jadusable goes missing. That's pretty much the bulk of what people remember or know of this creepypasta, but there's a little more to it. In part 2, two days after Ben's escape, a cult under the name The Moon Children reveal themselves to the world. They aim to ascend, and it's revealed that Ben willingly sacrificed himself along with other children to ascend. In part 3, a new character called Sarah is introduced as a prisoner of the Ethereal Hotel. Yeah, I don't know, it, it, I just- I was sort of lost at this point, but that's just how it is. She heals Ben's soul with a song of healing, and he reveals that there's a bigger player involved in this called The Father. There's a lot of things that just happen and you think, yep, okay, sure. It goes on about freeing the children and stopping the big bad man and yeah, I guess there's some pretty creative stuff in here. I remember accidentally stumbling across this as a kid watching Majora's Mask videos. I watched the fourth day video thinking it was real and I thought it was just like a strange glitch in the game, but then more Ben Drowned videos were recommended to me and I fell down the rabbit hole. Recounting the things I already knew and reading the newest stuff is really strange and quite nostalgic. Don't get me wrong, this stuff absolutely freaked me out as a kid, so it's nice to revisit it now that I'm older and just not scared of it. I, s I swear I'm not scared of it, okay? You put that face away! And I assume a lot of you watching are older too, and have some memories of reading this or watching it when you were younger, naive kid, and believed that everything on the internet was true. Koholint was real. Koholint Island is the place that Link's Awakening takes place on. This island exists in the Windfish's dream, similar to how Majora's Mask was able to create Termina. This island can be found in Breath of the Wild too. Kinda. There's an island in the game called Eventide Island. You know, the island that forces you to find three balls while taking away all of your gear? Well, there's Koholint rocks there on the island, and the beach is named Torombo Beach, which are all references to Koholint Island. So if it has been referenced, then maybe this island actually exists? The Windfish's Dream could have manifested into an actual island. Or maybe travelers have been to the Fish's Dream and named landmarks after it? Breath of the Wild converges all three timelines together, so I wouldn't say either of these explanations are a stretch. The Deku Butler's Son. This one's really sad. After defeating Odwala and returning the Deku Princess to the Deku King in Majora's Mask, the Deku Butler asks you to meet him in the Deku Shrine. Is that enough Deku for you? Anyway, <laughs> we, you'll have to follow the butler through the labyrinth, and once you follow him to the end, he'll apologize to Link for trying to outrun him. He'll also say that you reminded him of his son and how they used to race each other. It doesn't end here. At the start of the game, after being turned into a Deku scrub, Link will pass a twisted Deku looking tree. Now fast forward to the ending credits and we can see that the butler is broken down in front of the statue. Skull Kid had come across his son, stolen his soul and placed it upon Link. That's why the butler is reminded of his son when he looks at you. How sad. Majora's Mask Afterlife Dying Hallucination- HEY! WHAT DID I SAY? GET OUT OF MY FACE! 
Ah! Don't get me wrong, theories surrounding the games are fine. I mean, most of the things on this iceberg are theories. But oh my god, this one annoys me. Probably because Majora's Mask is my favorite game and the theory states that Link is dead. That's what this theory is. That Termina is Link experiencing purgatory after dying in the forest while interacting with Skull Kid. The five stages of grief and death are themes that are littered all over Majora's Mask, so that's where this theory stems from. Majora's Mask, in combination with the memory of Skull Kid, pretty much created Termina as an alternate reality to Hyrule. It's even said that on the back of the Majora's Mask game box, and as said before, the five stages of grief and death are found throughout the game. Why? Because everyone's facing the big bitch looming over their heads. So stop it. Hey! Royal Family Curse. This family is the royal family that governs over the Hylians. They always have a reigning king, a princess usually named Zelda, and sometimes a prince. No mention of Zelda's mother though, except in Breath of the Wild. There's not really any mention of a curse anywhere, so I think it's referring to the burden this family has been bestowed. They will forever be in a war against Ganon and the forces of evil, and will always have to give birth to a daughter to burden her with handling the Triforce of Wisdom. Unfortunately, someone's gotta do it, and that also goes for Link. I think the biggest burden put upon Zelda was in Breath of the Wild because of how fleshed out her backstory was compared to other Zeldas. Oh, and she also held back Ganon for a hundred plus years by herself while Link was like, I don't know, fishing or just just doing just doing doing that stuff, doing what he does. So, spill it, boy. Have the two of you been getting along all right? <laughs> it's okay, I know. Your silence speaks volumes. She gets frustrated every time she looks up and sees you carrying that sword on your back. It makes her feel like a failure when it comes to her own destiny. Don't worry, it's not like you carry blame in any of this. It's unfortunate. She's put in more than enough time. Ever since she was a young girl, she's gone through rigorous daily routines to show her dedication. She once passed out in the freezing waters trying to access this ceiling power. And she has nothing to show for it. Hyrule is gay. Um, come again? What do you- what, what does that even mean? Uh, okay, so the first thing that comes to mind is that theory that Ocarina of Time is a coming-of-age story, which, uh, I don't, I, I don't know about that one, Chief. In saying that, I think that this theory suggests that there are homosexuals in Hyrule, which, I mean, yeah, of course there would be. Obviously, sexuality isn't the focus of these games. <laughs> Okay, it's not the main focus, so it's never really explored. It's hinted at occasionally, but yeah. Zora tits. God damn, okay, I thought we were just horny posting for jokes, but I guess not. I wonder what this could mean- OH MY GOD, NO, NO, NO- Holy moly. Well, I should have expected that. Why do fish need titties anyway? Oh, that's the theory! That's the theory, right? I mean, they're anthropomorphic, so maybe that's why. Or maybe to distinguish between male and female Zoras. I think the latter would make sense. Like, check out these Zoras. The middle one is female. Slap a pair of fat titties on the other ones, and they all look female too. So I think that's why. Please stop slapping a pair of titties on fish. Potty mouthed whiz robes. Yeah, I got nothing. What does this even mean? I guess their chants sound rude or create bad things, or maybe when they laugh it's rude. I live in Smethic, Birmingham. If you want the fucking ball, come down and Smethic, that's for Danny G. I'll come out of my house and I'll break your fucking legs. Aliens, or as they're referred to in Majora's Mask, them. They are alien figures that descend from the sky and steal cows from Romani's ranch. Just like most quests in Majora's Mask, stopping them from stealing or harming Romani, Kremia, and the cows on the ranch is a time-sensitive task. You have to be there from day one, and if you fail to save the barn, the sisters will have lost their memories, the cows will be stolen, and oh man, they, they do not look okay anymore. This layer was pretty messed up for like a surface level iceberg layer, but now we'll be diving into the water. Mm -hmm. 
Lynx Crossbow Training. I remember when this game came out, and then I hadn't thought about it ever since. It's an on-rail shooter game where Link has to pass a series of crossbow-related tests to perfect his skills with the weapon. The game was made to show off the Wii Zapper accessory, you know that... gun? Other than that, there isn't much else to be said about the game. Sorry to the Link's Crossbow Training fan club. You will be missed. Chris Houlihan. He was a Nintendo Power Contest winner. This contest had contenders take a photo of the War Mech Encounter in Final Fantasy and send it to Nintendo Power by October 15th, 1990. His reward ties his name to a character and a secret room in A Link to the Past, and his room boasts a fat stack of 45 blue rupees, obtainable Triforce. This refers to the theory that you could obtain a physical version of the Triforce as a collectible item in Ocarina of Time. There were images of this that circulated the internet and a few videos too, but no, it was never possible. Or was it? Goron butt babies. Uh, what? What is up with this iceberg? You know, when all else fails, you turn to the Urban Dictionary and a butt baby is either a child conceived from the ass because of butt sex, or it's a mix of, uh, let's just say bodily fluids coming in and out of that area. Okay, but like, what does this have to do with Gorons though? Please, someone help me. I've had to deal with fish titties and I don't want to have to suffer anymore. Uh, do Gorons give birth from their butts? Or are they referred to as butt babies because of their appearance? Uh... Wait, I got it. I figured it out. It's because Gorons are all male, which means there are no females in their tribes, which means babies come from their cheeks. Case closed. Just let me out, please, please. Okay, I know how to pronounce this. It's temporal, not temporal. I can't believe I pronounced it wrong in the Mario 64 Iceberg video. Anyway, temporal lottery cheating. This is most likely referring to the lottery in Majora's Mask. Each lottery winning numbers are unique to each save file and they don't change. So you can cheat the system by remembering what they are and picking them after resetting time back to the first day. See, it's temporal as in time and space, not brain leak related stuff. Link has way too much power in Majora's Mask. Pre-Hyrule Historia Timeline Debates So this is the official Legend of Zelda timeline. Well, it wasn't always like this. There was always a hot debate surrounding where everything went before its official placements. It was like a war zone in forums, an all-out war of intellects battling for attrition on the timeline. I'm overhyping this because I can't find actual screenshots of anything, but it was legendary! Christianity this religion was implied to be the one that Link and other characters followed and fought for or against. These implications can be found in early Zelda games like The Legend of Zelda, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, and in early artwork for the Sanctuary in A Link to the Past. This Sanctuary also makes a return in A Link Between Worlds. I'm glad Nintendo went with the goddesses as their religious figures for the game because it really helps the Legend of Zelda universe feel like its own. You know, made with its own mythology in mind? Mystical Seed of Courage. This was a cancelled game that was supposed to be set after Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. The game was cancelled due to temporal leaks found in the developers. I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Or am I? No, 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 but <laughs> in all seriousness, the game was cancelled because there were issues surrounding linking all three games together. The game was supposed to feature the goddess Faror and was going to have time travel puzzles. Nintendo Gallery. If you bring Karlov, the owner of the gallery, a pictograph of an enemy in the game, he'll make a figurine out of it. There are loads of easter eggs that can be seen behind Karlov's desk, like the bunny hood, the all night mask, the Goron mask, the Kedon mask, one of Tijo's drums, bottles of Lon Lon milk, and Kako. How did these get here if they're from a different timeline? Who knows? I mean, they're just easter eggs, right? Right? Tetraforce. This is a name given to the Triforce if you put another piece into the middle, hence the Tetra, because four pieces. Nintendo has outright denied the existence of this, but we can still speculate. This theory came about when players noticed an upside down triangle on the Hylian shield in Ocarina of Time. Red, blue, green, and red. What? The colors red, blue, and green have represented each piece of the Triforce, which represents each goddess and main character like Ganon, Link, and Zelda, respectively. So, who would the fourth be? It's been thought that the fourth piece would be represented by the color purple, which is embodied by Vardy and Majora. What seems more plausible is the four light spirits from Twilight Princess. Each is named after a goddess, so we have Elden, Laneru, Farron, and Ordana. 
Farron and Ordana are the ones that stand out the most because their names are supposed to be two parts of the name Faror. Ordan, the place, is not considered a part of Hyrule, quote, You've never been to Hyrule, have you? Which is said to Link at the beginning of the game. Ordana, the light spirit's name, pretty much derives from Ordan too. This brought on the fourth goddess theory. The three previously mentioned goddesses created the Triforce, but there are more goddesses in the Legend of Zelda universe. The fourth goddess could be the one of time, sand, maybe Zelda, or Hylia, or even the great fairy of kindness. There are other candidates for the fourth piece of the Tetra Force, but these are the main ones. I really love this theory. It adds an interesting twist to the game, especially since the number four has so much prevalence in the game. So who could it be and who do you think it could be? Could it be a minor character, a major character, a goddess, a villain? Gruce. Very nice, very nice. However, we need to go deeper! Baron is a Twily. I've never even heard of this character. I don't really dabble on this side of the timeline, so I'll just do my best here. Ahem. <clears throat> Varen is the Sorceress of Shadows, and she looks an awful lot like a Twily in her humanoid form. She has pale blue skin, red eyes, reddish orange hair similar to Midna and Zant, so that's why it's been theorized. She's able to possess the bodies of characters and can morph into a beetle, bee, and spider. Her true form looks like a demonic fairy, not exactly a Twily, eh? Plus it is stated that she is actually from the Dark Realm. Could a Twily live in the Dark Realm? Who knows? Also Nintendo, what is going on with these titty sizes? They are enormous. Speaking of titties, Link's a boob guy. Oh my god, we're back here again, aren't we? Okay. I think Link has had his fair share of titties flaunted around him, and he is always incredibly flustered, so... yeah. Goron's a Muslim. Ah, yes, yes, of course. Uh, yeah, I, I, got, I got nothing. Real world religion was taken out of Zelda a long time ago. There was Islamic chanting in Ocarina of Time's Fire Temple, but that had nothing to do with Gorons. Gorons eat rocks and pound cheeks, like, I, I fail to see any connection here. Wait, maybe because the chanting was in the temple, and the Gorons made the temple, this makes them thought to be Muslim? Oh, okay, yeah, sure, man. Wand of Gamelon and Faces of Evil. These are Zelda games published by Philips Interactive Media for the CDI. They were released similarly to how Pokemon games are released. Both were dropped on the same day and both games have slight differences with each other. Although, these differences might not be too slight since one lets you play as Link and the other lets you play as Zelda. You would have to save the other character depending on what game you pick too. So save Zelda if you played Faces of Evil, save Link if you played Wand of Gamelon. Stop looking at yourself. What happened? <laughs> Nothing, Link. We were just about to have a feast. Great! <laughs> <laughs> Gee, it sure is boring around here. My boy, this piece is what all true warriors strive for. I just wonder what Ganon's up to. Fuse Shadow is Majora's Mask. They do have a very striking resemblance to each other. The coolest thing about this is that it helps explain the Legend of Zelda mask cult theory, and oh my god, it's an amazing theory. It's a pretty full-on theory that attempts to link all of the characters that are associated with the masks to show that a cult is intertwined with everything. Masks are such a major thing in the Legend of Zelda series, so I wouldn't be surprised if they all intertwined together or all had references to each other or all built from each other and stuff like that, like, it's crazy. Also, Big Lamau, you can get the few Shadow in Animal Crossing. Tingle Tower Slavery. In Wind Waker, there's an island called Tingle Island where Tingle resides. In order to get him there, you first have to rescue him from jail. Apparently, he stole a Picto box or something? When we next see him at Tingle's Island, he appears to be enslaving his brothers. Everything is just a little bit off about this whole area for people to think that it is. It's just... I mean, it speaks for itself. Out of all of the Tingle reincarnations or whatnot, this one is the most brutal and evil one. And Tingle isn't even supposed to be evil. He's there to help the player, not enslave his brothers. But maybe by doing so, this is helping Link? Damn. Arwings. This is the most used and recognizable vehicle in the Star Fox series. This ship can be found in Ocarina of Time and can be spawned through hacking the game. The point of the R-Wing was to test the flight patterns of Volvagia. I like to think that this is canon and happens after you leave the bonus zone or whatever it's called in Star Fox 64. Lock on the enemy this way. Never give up! Trust your instinct! Good morning, 
dress! <laughs> Freshly picked Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land. This is an action game developed by Vanpool and was published on the Nintendo DS by Nintendo. It's unclear whether or not this game is canon, but it lets you play as Tingle. As Tingle, you find yourself wanting to collect rupees for Uncle Rupee in order to go to Rupee Land. I don't think many people know about this game, mainly because it was never officially released to the West. It was only released in Japan and Europe. There was a supposed poll that would determine whether or not the game would come to America. So I think that's partly to blame for the lack of knowledge on the game's existence. And with that being said, let's move on to the next layer. Link is a Hateno native. In Breath of the Wild, there's a quest called Hylian Homeowner which allows you to buy a home in the Hateno village. The contractor for the house, Carson, explains that he was told to demolish the house because it had been abandoned for many years by the previous owner. And who was this homeowner? He is described as someone who left for military service years ago and never returned. Hang on, that's you! That fits Link's story. He went on military service and didn't come back because he was being resurrected for those 100 years. The Happy Mask Children So when the moon fucking eats you in Majora's Mask, you find yourself inside the belly of the beast and it's quite... Uh, nice and peaceful, contrary to the devastation it's trying to commit outside. But what do the kids look like behind the masks? Happy mask salesman. This is why I love the game so much. Does this look like asset flipping? Sure, but if Majora and Skull Kid made Termina, then it would make sense that the kids have the mask salesman's face. The kids take in your masks and exchange them for the fierce deity's mask. So in a way, they're all mask salesmen, physically and mentally. But hey, stop guilt tripping people, please. Shopkeeper's Revenge in Link's Awakening, you're able to steal from shopkeepers and obviously, the shopkeeper you steal from won't take it lightly. In addition to being hated by people, the shopkeepers can do this to you. <laughs> yeah, uh, good night Link. Fairy tits. No, fucking stop! Ah! Well, I think this is like the Zora tit situation, because if you think about it, do fairies even need tigbitties if they aren't hinted at even needing to use them? Yes, because I'm not going to argue against the creations of the goddesses. <clears throat> uh, moving on. Sheik's genitals. Oh, god, okay. Uh, ma oh, major spoilers for Ocarina of Time, but Sheik is Zelda. I know, it's pretty mind-blowing, but what's down there? It's an age-old question. So Sheik is a male in Ocarina of Time, but not in any other games he, she appears in. So what's going on down there? In Ocarina of Time, where does Sheik's genitals go when he turns back into Zelda and vice versa? Man, Sheik and magic is a hell of a drug. And that answers the question. Magic. Fictional magic usually has scientific elements embodied in it, but I don't think I have the formula for this one. I, I don't think anyone has a formula for this one yet. Toilet hand. Okay, this one's a pro gamer move. There's a recurring character in a few Zelda games inspired by Japanese ghost stories and it's just a hand called question mark question mark question mark. In Majora's Mask is found in the stockpot inn, chilling in a toilet. It needs some paper so naturally, you can give it some paper. This paper can be any of the land title deeds, Andrew's letter to Cafe and Cafe's letter to Mama. But uh, don't give the latter two because that's just, that's just cruel man. Remember, once you've done this, it cannot be undone unless the three days are reset and you'll get a heart piece for your... efforts? In Oracle of Ages, it's found in a lavatory in Western Liner Village in the past. You can drop seeds and pots down the toilet to harass the hands, so um, yeah that's great. There's a final toilet hand that has a name and arguably has the best quest tied to it. This is Feeny. She can be found in the Skyloft Night Academy in Skyward Sword. She needs some paper, and there's only one thing you can do about it. Give her Corlin's letter. For context, this dude wants you to give it to Karain, the girl he likes. A love letter. But uh-oh. Pippet the chat over here likes her too, so there's some stiff competition. Giving Karain the letter gets Corlin rejected and sad. That's why we want to give the love letter to Feeny, because she'll think it was for her, and she'll go and haunt Corlin in his dreams forever. Ah, Link, you matchmaker, you, you've, you, you've destroyed this boy's life. Either way, you get gratitude crystals, so yay, I think? Seven sages are all dead. In the adult timeline, a lot happens to help imply that all the sages are dead and their spirits might be the only things living on. Let's start with the easiest one to talk about, Naburu. 
In the child timeline, we see her get eaten by sand in the spirit temple. In the adult timeline, you have to fight her while she's in iron knuckle armor. Right afterwards, she is zapped by the true bosses of the temple and is turned to nothing. This is sort of the same with Darunia. He goes all Chad mode in the adult timeline in the fire temple talking about saving his brothers! Once you get to the room he went into, you find the temple boss, but no Darunia. You can find Rudo in the water temple where she explains that Zelda saved her and her people from the ice imprisoning them, and I think she calls Link a bad husband implying that Link claps fish cheeks? Uh huh. Well, follow her into the water temple and you'll find she just disappears. After completing this temple, if you head to Kakariko village, you'll find a monster that broke free of imprisonment attacking the village. Sheik will inform you that Impa imprisoned it to begin with and that she's in the shadow temple trying to do it again. You never find her in the temple, you also never see Saria as an adult. And Rauru is just gone. What do these sages all have in common? They all appear together in the chamber of sages after being MIA. But what about Zelda? Has she been dead the whole time too helping Link? Uh oh. This, this is amazing, so this refers to how the Master Sword is able to send Link to the present or the future in Ocarina of Time, depending on if he sheaths or unsheaths it. A Time Shift Stone is found in Skyward Sword, specifically in the Laneru province. When struck, they manipulate time in a small area around them, restoring the area to how it was in the past. Let's get back to Ocarina of Time. Taking the Master Sword out of the pedestal sends Link to the future, meaning that a Time Shift Stone might be under the pedestal. So it's thought that when Link pulls out the Master Sword from the pedestal, it saves the state of time that young Link is in and sends everyone into the future, making the future the real present because as said before, when a Time Shift Stone is activated, it turns everything in its radius into the state it was in in the past, making the young Link era the past. Were you all able to follow that? I hope so. Anyway, actions in the past affect what happens in the future, hence why Ganon will always rule unless he's stopped. Link is also the only person that retains his memory of the present in the past because he was the one that activated the stone, and he ages normally because the Master Sword still has the power to put him in hibernation to grow. If it was possible to observe this process happening from a distance, the whole of Hyrule would slowly change in a circle radius like it does in Skyward Sword. Things are starting to get wild now, but god damn it, we need to go deeper! Infinitely large Stealth Child. This one's a really strange glitch involving Stealth Children. These guys spawn in Hyrule Field at night, and when you kill one, the next one that spawns will be slightly bigger. Well, if you hack the game and make it so that it's night all the time, and kill enough of them, well, you get this. Ocarina of Time Unreal Remake. Cryzen X has been remaking Ocarina of Time using Unreal Engine 4. As you can see, it looks great, honestly. Like, as well as looking great, there are many game functionalities that have been replicated like the pause menus, movement, character interactions. There have been seven major updates in development, with the recent one being Kakariko Village. So if you want to play this remake, give it a download. Link in description. Forest Temple is Old Hyrule Castle. This temple can be found in Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, Spirit Tracks, Skyward Sword, and Triforce Heroes. I assume the theory is referring to the Ocarina of Time Forest Temple because of how castle-like it looks on the inside and on the outside, but other than that, there's not really much to say about it. The pose that we find in there could be deceased royal guards or royal family, the Wolfos could be royal guard dogs gone savage, and the Deku Barbers are like overgrown fauna, so hmm... Malon 1. I got a feeling this refers to Malon possibly ending up with Link after Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. See, Rudo and Link are engaged in the adult timeline, but Link is sent back to his childhood to live out his life. So Link leaves the adult timeline and abandons his fiance, and Malon most likely gets to marry her fairy boy. Oh, and because Link left this timeline, Ganondorf is left to resurrect without any pushback which leads to the flooding of Hyrule. Malon wins. Irozuki Tingle no Koi no Balloon Trip. This is another hidden gem of a Tingle game. A man is just chilling, you know, just watching TV, and he sees an advertisement for a book to make him better with the ladies. So just like any rational person, he orders it, but the book beats the shit out of him and sends him inside the book, where he becomes Tingle. Tingle meets three characters that were probably inspired by these homies, and they help him to escape the book. Tingle has to solve puzzles with his new friends while also wooing the five female characters he able uh, blah, 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 the five female characters he's able to do that with. Oh, and you can't finish the game unless you have a good relationship with all five characters. Sure, why not? Zelda's Adventure. This was another flop of a game developed for the Philips CDI by Viridus Corporation. What was with the fascination of developing Zelda games for this
DVD player. This game is based in Tolmac, which is Camelot backwards. <laughs> hey, spell, spell tuna sub backwards. <laughs> anyway, this game is about Zelda having to save Link from Ganon by collecting the seven celestial signs. What the hell's a celestial sign? Is that like the asparagus and crab? Like, I don't... What? All Iron Knuckles are Naburu. So we've mentioned and seen Naburu in Iron Knuckle armor, but who's in the other Iron Knuckles? If we take a closer look, we can see... Ew, what the hell is that? It's a Gerudo, but why are her eyes just so, like, big and bug-eyed? Like, what the hell is that? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, this theory suggests that every one of these Iron Knuckles are Naburu. They all kind of look exactly like her, so was she mind-controlled this many times to fight Link? Yes. And with that being said, we need to go beyond the iceberg. There's no going back now, so prepare yourselves. We're in too deep. Soul Calibur 2 is canon. This game is Link as a playable character on the GameCube version. Zelda summons Link to stop the evil at work in Soul Calibur. He gets transported there, defeats Inferno, saves the day, and then leaves in style. So if it's going to fit anywhere on the timeline, it'll be right here after Link beats Ganon. Like right after. Unless Zelda summoned Link from his new childhood era after Ocarina of Time and made him turn into an adult again, which doesn't seem very likely. So actually, it would probably fit somewhere around here after the Hero of Time Link grows up. Yeah, let's just put it right there, that seems the most plausible. Even though it's not specific which Zelda asked for which Link's help, he's wrapping the Hero of Time Link clothing, so it probably happened around here. Lenzo is Link's grandfather. The reasoning for this is that Lenzo has been to Outset Island, where he met Link's grandmother, and thinking back to that time, he said he thought her to be a lovely young lass. Maybe that hints to him having liked her? Link and Lenzo are similar to each other, right? They, um... Uh, they... both love pictography? Oh, oh, he's old enough to be his grandpa as well. Uh, he's also Link's friend? Grandpa stats! Breath of the Wild E3 Heist During E3 2016, there was discussion and rumours spreading about a hacker that was attempting to steal the Breath of the Wild E3 demo. Did the hacker successfully steal the game? The short answer is no. But the long answer is a massive story that spans a short period of time with the fate of the world at stake, the people versus the big corporation with the priceless jewel up for grabs, or something like that. Notorious hacker NW Player123 claimed that the demo was planned to be yoinked from a Wii U over a network as it was being played. A tool known as a TCP Gecko would be able to do this by forcing a Wii U to connect with a PC in order to command the Wii U to give over the game files. Speaking of game files, loads of them don't make it into the final versions of many games, so imagine what goodies the demo could have held. And then I've written like a cheeky, cheeky face into the script. Valley of the Flood Rumors This was rumored to be a Legend of Zelda game where the Hero of Time failed to appear in a technologically advanced period in Hyrule to defeat Ganon. So a boy fakes being the hero, Link, to save Hyrule and prevent it from being flooded by the goddesses. Flooded by the goddesses? Where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, right here, Wind Waker baby! This game would have fit right here, and I think it's sort of beautiful. But it makes me feel very uneasy. The false hero would have failed, right? Everything was flooded, so it makes sense. It sounds like the game would have been very grim. Maybe even more darker than Majora's Mask? I think it could have been good for the series, though. It would have added character to the Zelda universe beyond whenever we just play as Link. Ahem. <clears throat> Alright, picture this. Ganon has just been defeated. All is silent, and the people emerge from the rubble and feel immense relief. They work together to begin rebuilding Hyrule to be able to live in harmony. This rebuilding goes beyond what was expected and technological advancements are made. From the rubble, these advancements birth primitive machinery and massive metallic structures. The wealthy live in these massive structures that surround the newly built Hyrule Castle, while the further out you went from the castle, the more poverty there was. You, the player, are a young swordsman at the age of 19 that is a little better with a gun blade than the average person in your town. You live on the outskirts of Hylian society in this village with your family and you've had a harsh life infested with attacks from monsters and people, and you've had to farm for food while the wealthy have lived in comfort. Race relations between Zoras, Gorons and Hylians have been a little shaky ever since the royal family secluded themselves in their metal buildings. 
Relations with Dekus are non-existent with any race. The Dekus want nothing to do with the rebuilding and will attack others on sight. Gerudos are nowhere to be seen. They went into hiding after it was found out that Ganondorf was birthed by them. Your neglected town has been receiving regular visits from Hylian Royal Guards as of late for unknown reasons. They bring food, weapons, and building material and only speak to the village elders and leaders, leaving you and your family in the dust. Your father would have been informed by the guards on what was happening, but he was jailed for thievery in the city. Why is this happening all of a sudden? It doesn't matter, does it? The village is looking a lot happier and things are looking up for your people. Slowly but surely, word spreads of Ganon's resurrection and Sheikah spies are sent to search for the Hero of Time or another hero bestowed with the Triforce of Courage. You've been honing your skills due to the mass panic, fear and depression spreading throughout the land. Crime is rising and people are getting desperate all because Ganon is being resurrected and the Hero of Time was nowhere to be found. The goddesses agree to flood Hyrule if nothing can be done after a cult with connections to the royal family, the Sheikah, and the common folk pray to the goddesses to flood Hyrule. The main character, after seeing the panic from a lack of hero, decides to imitate the hero lookwise and take up the mantle. He manages to convince some people while not convincing others depending on your actions. During his imitation, he learns about the lives of some of the people of Hyrule and even finds love. The royal family are onto him though, so he's kidnapped by the Sheikah and is forced to make a deal with the royal family where he must keep up his act and either save Hyrule or die trying. Zelda reluctantly assists you, the imitator, to prepare for Ganon. Ganon is resurrected and it's time to face him. The hero's attempts at unsheathing and wielding the Master Sword have all been failures and he must face Ganon without the legendary weapon. Of course, he is decimated by Ganon like he was nothing. Hyrule's hope is lost. Those who witness the hero's demise fall to their knees, the goddesses ascend, and flood everything. Many of Hyrule's inhabitants drown and it's over, until everything picks up again in Wind Waker. Now how's that for a Dark Zelda game? Although, I don't think Nintendo would have greenlighted this game at all. Unless? But it's really fun to think about, isn't it? A Zelda game with a bad ending that pulls at your emotions. Wait, 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 wait! Nintendo might have a Zelda game with dark themes cooking. A prequel to Breath of the Wild was just announced, and as you know, the events leading up to Breath of the Wild aren't exactly cheerful. I'm sure it won't be super dark because it's a Hyrule Warriors game, but we'll have to see. November 20th, 2020. I'm excited. Are you excited? Anyway, what, what was I talking about? What was I- I could go on and on about my ideas, like the imitation Link having a 50 or so year old Zelda breaking down in front of him, wishing for the real Link, and for you to just go back to your farm life, and for it to all be over. Or maybe there is no Zelda, maybe the Hero of Time era Zelda has been dead for years, and this generation of royal family members forced their daughter to take the role of Zelda. God damn. Sarkon murder. Oh boy. Okay, so there's this guy called Sakon in Majora's Mask, and he's a petty thief. Sakon D's nuts, but on the first day at night, he'll steal a bomb bag from the old lady that owns the bomb shop. You can swing your sword at him, which makes him drop the bomb bag. The weirdest part about it is that if you do nothing, he'll just escape to his hideout, and the guard will do nothing about it? Corrupt officials and military assisting and running the black market? Yeah, I think so. But let's say you decide you want to shoot at Sakon with a bow and arrow instead. Well, he blows up and dies immediately. To put this into perspective, he's one of the only Hylians you can kill in any Legend of Zelda game. Hestu's Gift In Breath of the Wild, there are a whopping 900 Korok seeds to be collected. It takes an insane amount of time to collect them all, which makes collecting 441 of them a better task. Doing this gives you maximum sword space, shield, and bow space. But getting 900 will impress Hestu so much that he gives you his... gift? It's poop. All the Koroks took a dump, gave it to you, Hestu used them to upgrade your pouches, and after collecting them all, he took a massive dump and gave it to you as a reward. Hooray, we did it, yeah! But it's not supposed to be some sort of gross reward. In Japan, this is referred to as a Kin no Unko, which translates to Golden Poop, and is a good luck charm as it both means Golden Poo and Good Luck in Japanese. So... thanks, Hestu? Pawning the Deku Princess. In Majora's Mask, you defeat Odwalla and save the Deku Princess to stop Monkey from getting executed. To save her and bring her back to the king, you have to shove her into a glass bottle. Oh no. Fuck, shit, shit, no, please, don't, no! So once she's in this bottle, you should take her to the king, right? 
Screw that! Let's go sell her off to the undercover black market in Termina with links to the mayor and other government officials and store owners. What do you mean I can't sell her right now? When can I sell her? Is the Deku Trafficker not available right now? Why is the shopkeeper so relaxed about seeing Deku Royalty in a bottle trying to be sold to him? He reacts the same way when you try to sell him seahorses. Oh man, how deep does this black market go? As said before, Termina ceases to exist soon after Link leaves the area, so we'll never get to see when the shopkeeper wants to buy the Deku Princess. The Fourth Day this doesn't refer to Ben Drowned in any way, this is a strange glitch that occurs in the Astral Observatory. You need to ask Professor Shikashi to use the telescope and when you do, you have to wait until there's 2 seconds left until the moon crashes before exiting the telescope and then, congratulations, day 4. There are other similar ways to do this, like exiting the boat ride or finishing the Goron race before the moon crashes. On the 4th day, the moon moves very high up into the sky. It's thought that this would have been the moon's position on the first day when Majora's Mask was developed to have seven days instead of three. The whole game is based around a three day cycle and these glitches eliminate the cycle so a lot of things don't work or don't appear. Who would have thought? Demise and Girahim are Lerulians. He is the reason why there's an endless war between good and evil in the Zelda universe. He cursed the world, giving Ganon the power to resurrect and in response to that, the goddesses have their two chosen heroes, Link and Zelda, who constantly have to stop Ganon. Here's an edgy quote by Demise. My hate never perishes. It is born anew in a cycle with no end. I will rise again. Those like you, those who share the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero. They are eternally bound to this curse. An incarnation of my hatred shall ever follow your kind, dooming them to wander a blood-soaked sea of darkness for all time. Well, ah, that's Demise. He wants to destroy and rule everything. Now let's talk about Low Rule, which is a parallel universe to Hyrule. This universe has a sacred realm, clear counterparts to Link, Zelda, and Ganon, and there's a royal family. Low Rule fell into turmoil because when war broke out over their Triforce, they destroyed it. The only counterpart Low Rule doesn't have is the Master Sword. The Master Sword is the most important point of this theory because Ravio seeks out Link to defeat Yuga because he has a Master Sword. And what does a Master Sword do? It destroys evil. Let's look at Demise's sword. Just like Link and Fee in Skyward Sword, his sword has an entity residing within it. This entity is Girahim. If we take a better look at the sword, we can see that it contrasts the way the Master Sword looks like. Oh, and what is this? An upside down Triforce can be seen on Demise's sword. Where have we seen that before? Low rule. The alternate reality that Link saves is theorized to be the one where all of Hyrule's troubles come from. And now that Link has restored their Triforce, Demise could take it and grow even greater in power. On that note, we are up to the final layer. Brace yourselves, because it's not for the faint of heart. This theory connects some, if not all, Zelda games in one way or another, even those in different timelines. There's so much more to this theory than Phantom Ganon's sword, but let's start there. In Wind Waker, Phantom Ganon has a sword, who would have guessed, but check it out. There's a little something written in Hylian on the sword. Well, what does it say? Zubora Gebora. Do those names ring a bell? They might not, so I'll explain. These two are the blacksmiths in the mountain village that Link can go to to upgrade his Kokiri sword to a razor sword, then to the almighty gilded one in Majora's Mask. Their names are written on the sword, implying that they would have been the ones to forge the sword. But hang on, Wind Waker happens in a completely different timeline and an unknown amount of years beyond Majora's Mask. So how the hell were the swords forged for the Phantom? The Gap Between Dimensions In the Forest Temple, Link makes his way to the room where he has to face off against Phantom Ganon. Once defeated, Ganondorf calls it a worthless creation and banishes it to the Gap Between Dimensions. 
This is the only mention of this gap in the whole Zelda universe. This might mean that it's a phrase rather than just an actual place, because the European release of the game replaces the gap between dimensions with Hades. You know, the underworld. I've never in my entire life heard anyone ever call Hades the gap between dimensions. However, because the game is in Japanese, it's all written in Japanese before being translated, and the original Japanese version references the gap between dimensions as Phantom Ganon's punishment. Take a look at the boss fight. He enters the worlds in the paintings like it's a very strange Mario game, showing that there is a way to get to other dimensions. There are loads of other dimensions in the Zelda universe. Obviously, we have Termina, Lorule, the Silent Realm, the Twilight Realm, and the Dark World, and they can all be accessed in some way. So is the gap between dimensions a null void between places where someone can get lost or accidentally stumble upon if they don't path their way properly to another dimension? Instead of stumbling to it, Phantom Ganon was banished there. So, let's take a look at some gaps. The first one that comes to mind is the gap between Hyrule and Lorule in the Link Between Worlds. When Link enters a fissure, we can see lots of dark lights moving all over the place. This may be what the gap between dimensions looks like in its purest form, but I think it could also be magic used by Yuga. Back to the forest temple, Link finds himself walking through this spiraling tunnel which leads to a strangely flipped forest temple. We see a similar tunnel in Majora's Mask right before entering Termina. Right after getting to the end of the tunnel, Link is in Termina, where he meets the Mask Salesman, where his adventure begins. So, there are two accounts of a tunnel being the entrance that leads to another dimension, and the distances and spaces between dimensions are the gaps, and entrances to different dimensions can be different to one another. Now that that's established, let's go back to Phantom Ganon. Link beats him and now he's in the gap between dimensions. I believe that he found a way into Termina. When Link enters Clocktown for the first time, the three day counter starts, and there's no mention of Phantom Ganon anywhere in Termina during these three days. There's also no confirmation on how old Termina or the world that existed before it was, only that Majora's Mask and the memories of Skull Kid created Termina. We can see that the Skull Kid was friends with the four giants and is friends with the fairies in Termina before getting the mask, so it definitely existed before the three days. Phantom Ganon may have stumbled into Termina or the world before it through finding an entrance in the gap, had a new sword smithed for him and then went to find Ganondorf somehow after Hyrule was flooded. Timeline wise, this doesn't make sense at all because Termina is found in the child timeline. But hang on, this means that the gap between dimensions would also be a gap between time, as Phantom Ganon would have had to have found himself in the child timeline, possibly years before he even existed. Although, Phantom Ganon could have found his way to the world of Termina in the adult timeline, but Termina may not have even existed in that adult timeline. <laughs> as you can see, the details are obviously very scarce. Like how would this have happened? Why did the blacksmiths agree to smith the sword? How did Phantom Ganon get back to Ganondorf? It's hard to say, and this theory doesn't even end here too. Hyrule Warriors is a game that includes multiple characters from different timelines and periods of Hyrule, as well as a few new faces. Characters from other timelines are brought to the present Hyrule through using the Gate of Souls. This is where the franchise peaks with space and time travel seeing as the whole plot is based around it. It also seems that the Gate of Souls cuts the gap between dimensions out as much as possible, seeing as it's extremely good at what it does. I've said it can bring characters to the present day Hyrule, but it can also bring massive amounts of past Hyrule land to present Hyrule land. The reasoning for this is to be able to find the fragments of Ganondorf lost in space and time. How would the time travel be so good that it eliminates the worry of the gap? Well, the person making the portals is Sia, the one that wants to help Ganon and get it on with Link. She has a counterpart, Lana, and together they once formed the Guardian of Time, which at this point might as well be the Goddess of Time. So it makes sense that the Guardian and her broken up parts would be able to perfect time travel. This game isn't canon by the way, which is such a shame because it would fit right here on the timeline, which would perfectly explain why Breath of the Wild has landmarks and references from every timeline in it. Thank you, Matt Pat. You made a damn good Zelda theory. Hey, no, you, get, get out of here, not you. Ah! So after all of this, my point is, a gap between dimensions exists somewhere in space and time and can be found surrounding entrances to other worlds or in between entrances to other worlds. Phantom Ganon was banished there by Ganondorf and found his way to Zubora Gebora, got a new sword crafted and then found his way to Ganondorf in the adult timeline. If you want to count Hyrule Warriors as canon, then the Guardian of Time perfected easily accessible portals and allowed for Hyrule to be how it is in Breath of the Wild. 
Make Hyrule Warriors canon already. You know what? Let's start a hashtag. Hashtag Make Hyrule Warriors canon. Here's my Instagram and Twitter. You can follow them if you want, and I'll be liking and retweeting any posts using this hashtag. How great would it be to finally have some sort of in-game explanation for Breath of the Wild converging the timelines and for all those references found in other games? It would be quite amazing. Let's make it happen! Unless Breath of the Wild 2 explains everything, then... Ah. Uh. This refers to the stone tower in Majora's Mask and is about the blasphemous symbolism found at the tower. The tower can be seen looming high in the sky and has clear similarities to the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel was built to reach the heavens, but God thwarted the construction by having everyone speak different languages so no one could understand each other. Fun fact, that's the Bible's explanation on why there are different languages spoken around the world. Anyway, ghosts and the undead reside in Ikena Canyon, which suggests that the tower was built high enough to exclude the misery below. It reached some sort of heaven, which is forbidden. The tower's imagery continues this sacrilege through the blocks seen around the outside of the temple and in Termina Field. The ones in Termina Field are stationary, but the ones found in the tower move in order to create a path to climb the tower and go inside the temple. To do this, you need to summon up to four soldier-like helpers to stand on switches to move the blocks. This can be done by playing the Elegy of Emptiness, and depending on which link you play it as, the outcome is different. The statues are meant to represent a hollow or heartless version of the one who plays the song, and I'm convinced that the statues show the final blow that each character took before death. What's even more disturbing is the mask transformations. A blood-curdling scream can be heard whenever they're put on, and the mask look like they're screaming in agony, just like each character would have moments before death. Whether they had their soul sucked out of them, fell off of a cliff, or fought pirates, they're brought back as hollow statues to aid Link. Using the dead with some sort of necromancy-style revival song to enter the sacrilege-style temple? Blasphemy. But let's look at Link's Hylian statue. His soulless eyes pierce those who gaze upon him. His fake smile cracks the very reality it exists in and gives those in need an apprehensive hope. He is this game's Gilbert, but unlike Gilbert, he and the other statues are a necessary evil needed to take down Majora. Which, I don't know, sounds a bit sacrilege to me. So let's move on to those blocks I was talking about. From the front, we can see that they're a monkey human skull-like figure with wide eyes and a poked out tongue mocking whoever it locks eyes with. We can see its hands placed on its knees like it's in a squatting position. Looking at it from behind and the sides reinforces the squatting. But what is it mocking? Look underneath the block and bam, it's squatting or probably even sitting on a Triforce while giving it a fat lick. It's mocking the goddesses, those that created the lands, but not Termina. We can see the exact same imagery like this on the block towers leading to the canyon in Termina Field. So could these blocks represent the creators of the stone tower denouncing the goddesses and even trying to ascend beyond them because they didn't create their lands? It makes sense, right? Majora's Mask probably originated from ancient Hyrule, and the land of Termina is distant from Hyrule. So mocking those that have no power in these lands doesn't seem far-fetched. Oh, and don't even get me started on who or what created the towers. No one knows how old Termina is. For all we know, it could be ancient, or it could be young with a massive history created by Majora to give off the illusion of an ancient land. Uh... Now let's look at the entrance, which is a giant gaping face with a finger on fire pointed to the skies. The flaming finger pointing suggests blasphemy towards the goddesses, and what does the gaping face mean? It's most likely a face meant to be made to mock the goddesses. Now let's go inside the temple, and we can see similar imagery here, but it's the temple's main mechanics I want to talk about. You're able to flip the entire temple by using light arrows. This temple is high in the sky, so it's like you're flipping the heavens. You'll notice a face in the middle of the area that flips to create another face. Before the temple is flipped, the face looks a lot like the final version of Majora's Mask, Majora's Wrath, staring at the sky, at the goddesses. It kind of looks like the Fuse Shadow too. Oh god. Uh, if you flip it, the face looks like the actual Majora's Mask, staring down at the goddesses, ascending beyond them. Could Majora's Mask have wanted to use Wrath, a deadly sin by the way, to ascend beyond the goddesses, and once it got there, Majora's Mask would put away his Wrath form and have the goddesses looking up at it, like it's ruling over them with ease? Alright, this is the final theory. This is a serious major warning to everyone. This theory will haunt you. This will screw with you. This one will keep you up at night. 
It will destroy you mentally. Recovery from it will be very long and painful. As I'm writing this, it's been a week since I first witnessed it and I'm still writhing in agony. I get a max of 3 hours sleep at night because it continues to just ring in my ears. Permanently going off like a siren with no off switch. Being awake in the day is nice, but I just... I, I, can't, I can't deal with it at night. It's just, it's so bad. It just, it, it fucks with me, you know? Like, you, you've been warned, alright? This is... This has plagued and rotted my brain for so- You know, I, I can't keep this up anymore. Like, what what the heck is this? What is going on, huh? Like, what? Like, Ere? Ere? <laughs> what? The more I ingrain the song into my head, the more it just slaps. Like, when the da 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 hits, it's just- It's bliss. And the second song, God damn! Those moans and groans, it's just- It's art. Like, mmm! There's a third song too, and um, it's- Groovy? Oh my god, it's happening. I've- I've ascended beyond the goddesses. I've seen it all, and I'm inspired. I'm going to make a new Zelda song for my favorite game. Well, not really, but I think we need to clock town new music. Here we go. Got your girl's titty in my hand, her pants are down, I'm about to embrace. Cheeks are huge, well I'll be damned, crashing it into my face. Terminator may as well be doomed, ass so big that time will displace. Clap them hard, the sound boomed, crashing it into my face. The final hours are coming soon, turn it up, let's hear the bass. I'm gonna be eating a moon, crashing it into my face. Mouth wide open, here it comes Time to devour, that is the case Remember to also eat up the crumbs Crashing it into my face This has been The Legend of Zelda Iceberg Conquered. I really love the Legend of Zelda series, and all these facts and theories pretty much just reinforce that. It's just, I, I love this iceberg, it was crazy fun. Where do you rank on this iceberg? Comment it down below. I usually read every comment, so I'll definitely see yours. I really enjoyed making this video, it's one or two months in the making, so I put a lot of effort in, and I really hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks to my friends who helped me with the video. Haru and KaiBaQ, they were the ones that did the animations for the Valley of the Flood. They're good friends of mine, their links will be in the description. They do really great drawings and animations, so I really hope you all enjoy their content as well, just like I do. Shout out to my friend Nick, aka Osarak, who you've seen in my live streams sometimes. He, he really helped a lot. He helped a lot with getting footage for the Gmod stuff, so I really appreciate his help. Thanks, my man. I can't say thanks enough for you all watching and for my friends who helped me and all that stuff, so <laughs> thanks again. Subscribe. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you all in the next one. I know.